Hello, everybody, and welcome to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and as you can see, I'm in the podcast studio today. We're going to look at a viewer question about applying clearances around polygons. This is a very important question because it does relate to high speed design, and we'll look at some industry standards on that topic in the process. Make sure to hop into Altium Designer and follow along, and let's get started. So before we get started with our tutorial, let's take a look at that viewer question. Merrick Wollenden writes, Hello, can you show us how to make ground departures from signal paths 0.3 millimeters and 1 millimeter from power paths on one board? Often when we're designing AC circuits with high current, we use the same branch from the paths using polygon pour, and a breakdown and short circuit can occur. So it's really useful to know more about this program and this special option. So to do this in Altium Designer, you need to take advantage of the query system and the net class system. And actually this is an included feature. It's not a special option. It's built into the PCB rules and constraints editor. So I'll show you how to do that. But I think the broader design question is this, how do you determine those clearances and where can those standards be found? So let's take a look at that issue first. And then I'm gonna show you an example in Altium Designer where you can apply those clearances. So the main industry standard that you would typically concern yourself with if you're looking for values for clearances between conductors operating at different voltages is the IPC 2221 standard. So if you head over to the Altium blog, you will find a article on IPC 2221 PCB clearance standards that are used in high voltage design. So I have a link to this article in the description for this video. Make sure to go over to the Altium blog and check this out. Now, IPC 2221 covers a lot of different standards. And if you remember the video that we did on IPC 2221 versus 2152, you remember that we talked about this in terms of the temperature rise in a conductor at a high current. Now, IPC 2221 also specifies conductor spacing requirements. Now, if you dig into the 2221 standard, you will see here that there is this table that is included in the 2221 standard. In this table, you can see here that there are specifications for minimum spacing between bare board and assembled board for different DC or AC peak voltage values. You can look at this table and you can figure out what your spacing between conductors should be just based on the voltage values here. So you can see here for AC voltages, you're typically gonna need a one millimeter spacing between your conductors at 112 volts AC, 60 Hertz. So this is kind of the typical value where this comes from. If you're operating higher voltages, um, you know, maybe you get up above 300, you can see that spacing starts to increase. For a bare board, you can also see here that we have these different uh, values here for these spacings. What are all these different values here along the top? Well, if you look down at the bottom of this table, you'll see that this is broken out by internal conductors, uncoated external conductors at sea level, uncoated external conductors at high altitude, external conductors with a polymer coating, and so on and so forth. It really depends what you're doing with your conductors, if they're internal, external, or coded. And you can see that these requirements can vary uh, pretty wildly depending on where the board is being deployed. So you can see here at high altitude, you're gonna require much higher clearance than if you're at lower altitude or uh, sea level, and then even lower clearance if uh, you're an internal conductor here. So that's the difference between B1, B2, and B3. So those are some of the main differences here. So there is also another standard, which is the IPC 9592 standard. Now the IPC 9592 standard is a specific standard for power conversion devices for computer and telecommunications industries. So it's for a subset of products. Its clearance requirements are a bit different here. And you can see here that we have some different peak values in this table that then specify different spacings. And so you can see here that when you get to high enough peak voltages, the minimum spacing starts to increase and actually becomes a function of the peak voltage. So that's another standard to concern yourself with. There is also a clearance calculator that is very convenient. So you can just put in whatever peak voltage you're working with. Let's say it's, you know, 115 or 120 volts AC coming out of the wall. Just hit calculate. It's gonna give you some different values in mils 
for your minimum clearance between traces. So I'm not sure why the IPC 9592 result is giving zero mils. As they say in the software industry, the fastest way to lose a customer is to do a live demo. But in any case, I'll go in and debug this and get this fixed. You can see here the 2221 results display nicely for internal, external, and coded traces. Once you've determined your clearances, how do you set them inside of a PCB editor? In Altium, what you can do is you can use the net class option. Net classes are basically collections of nets and they allow you to set design rules to all of those nets simultaneously. So you don't have to do it on a net by net basis. You could do it on a net by net basis if you want to, you don't have to, you can do it using net classes. Other CAD programs have a similar feature where you can basically group nets together and apply a single design rule to all of those nets. So I'm gonna show you how to do it in Altium. Basically what we wanna do is inside the schematic, we of course want to identify all of the nets that are gonna have the same group of rules. And once we do that, we need to then define a design rule inside the PCB editor. First thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna pick the nets that we wanna work with. So in this example design that I have on screen, we basically have um, a few different nets that are going to be running at um, 120 VAC, and we're gonna use those as our AC power nets. So that's gonna be set to the one millimeter uh, clearance that we saw in the question. So you can see here in the PCB layout that we have one set of nets that is unrouted. So you can see the ghost wires right here, and that is going to be our ground. So we have some ground that we're going to fill in on this PCB, and we want to enforce some clearances on that ground to some of these other nets. Now, some of these nets you can see here, they may be carrying somewhat high current. Some of them are just signal nets, and you can see we have a little bit of a mix on this board. Same thing on the top layer. On the top layer, we have some other nets. We're just going to set the ground on the bottom layer for this example, but we could do this same type of thing on the top layer, and we could do it on a layer by layer basis if we had some internal layers here um, in this design. How do we get started doing this? Well, first thing we could do is we could go in here and then go to design and classes. We could create a new class. We could call this AC nets, just as an example. Once we create that AC nets class, we can then scroll through here and then we can start to add stuff into this class. So for example, if I know that net J3 pin one is going to operate at 120 volts AC and it's going to need a one millimeter clearance to ground, I can add it in here to this list. Same thing with, let's say, a connector J4 pin two, that's net J4 two, and so on and so forth. So I can go on down this list. One of the problems that you might run into with this approach is if you have these nets all with the default naming scheme, it might be difficult to actually know or be sure which of these nets is actually operating at the right voltage and needs that clearance rule. So if you don't have them written down somewhere or you don't have a list of those nets, then you might omit one of those nets or you might add in one of these other nets mistakenly when you're creating your net class. So that's an important point to note here is that if these nets aren't named properly, there is a bit of a risk that you don't add them in to the correct net class. Another approach that we can take here is rather than creating this kind of AC nets net class, what we can do is we can actually create the net class inside the schematic. Well, what I can do is when I'm inside the schematic, I can use a blanket directive. So a blanket directive is a really cool feature that basically allows you to apply parameters to multiple objects in the schematic simultaneously. So what I can do is I can kind of draw out this oblong box shape like this. Basically anything inside of this box is going to have the same set of design rules applied to it. Now I have to be careful here where I place this because you'll notice here if I drag this too far over, I'm gonna end up applying that same design rule to the ground net and I may not want that same design rule applied to the ground net. So I need to just move this over just like this so it's encompassing all of these different nets here that are gonna be running at AC. I could even bring this down like this so that it intersects this net, which we also have coming off this connector running at AC. Now, once I draw out this blanket, what I can do is right here, select this parameter set option, just attach it to the blanket. And then with it selected, I can go in here to the properties panel, make sure it's selected. And in the properties panel, click add net class. 
When I add in this net class, I'm gonna just call this, let's say, power nets. I can name it whatever I want, but I'm gonna call it power nets. So this is going to be the net class that will appear in my PCB editor. And when that net class appears in the PCB editor, I can then use that to assign design rules just to these nets. So that's how I'm gonna control the clearance against just these sets of nets here in this part of the schematic. So I just save it, do a quick update. I always hit the validate button, we'll execute and then close it and there we go. So now when I go to design and classes, you'll see here that the power nets uh, object that we just created um, in the schematic now appears inside the PCB editor. And all of those nets that I want to add into this uh, net class appear here in the members side. So you remember before I started to add in, I think net J42, that would have actually been incorrect in this case. What I really needed to add in was J41. So that's just an example here, and it should illustrate why net naming is important, as well as using some of these other tools like this directive feature are important to make sure that you apply your design rules and your net class rules to the right set of nets. Now that we have this net class applied, when we go into the PCB editor, we can then go to design and rules, and then this is where we'll configure the clearances. So here we have a default clearance rule, and we're always gonna have this default clearance rule. We need to then create a new rule, and this new rule is just going to apply to our power nets. So I could rename this, uh, this design rule, whatever I want. I could write it out like this, power nets, if I wanted to. Um, doesn't really matter. Um, what matters is how we configure it. So once we have this name set, we're gonna then create clearances between two sets of objects. So we wanna create a clearance between our net class, which was power nets, and then our ground net. So the second object just has to be under net and then select GND. So here we only have certain objects in the net section, um, so in the ground net, and then in the power nets section. All right, we only have traces, polygons, and fills. We do also have vias, and it would be a good idea to apply whatever clearances we set to those vias as well. And then one thing I always do is just select ignore pad to pad clearances within a footprint. That is important because of course, in this example, as you saw in the schematics, we do have those nets assigned um, in the same footprint for a given component. So what I can do here is just as an example, um, we're applying a one millimeter clearance. So we just hit 40 since I'm in mills, I hit apply and there we go. So that sets that rule, the default rule that we have here, we need to just check our priorities. Notice that the priority for the default rule is below the priority for the power nets rule. So the power nets rule is gonna get applied first and then we'll have the default rule. And that's exactly how we, how we have to set this up so that we can automate this solution. Now the default rule, we're just gonna go ahead and leave it as is. Um, here you can see that we have 10 mil track to polygon. In the question, this was actually saying that it should be 0.3 millimeters. So we would wanna set that to 12 mils, just as an example. We could also then set fill to track because sometimes you'll use copper fill for these large rails. And then we would probably wanna do the same thing with polygon to via and fill to via, so just as some examples. That's how we would then set that secondary design rule. And then we'll go ahead and hit apply. You'll notice here in this layout that we haven't placed anything in the ground net. So we just have these pins assigned to ground, but we don't actually have anything routed for ground. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the snap first, make sure that we are snapping to the board shape, usually to increase the snap distance. And then here we'll go ahead and draw this out along the board edge. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a polygon pour that's just gonna fill everything in on the bottom layer with ground. And then what we'll do is when we pour that, it's going to get assigned to the ground net, and then that will obey the design rules that we set in the rules and constraints editor. So here I have this poured, um, we're gonna assign it to GND. We're gonna pour over all the same net objects, that way it pours over these pins in these components. And then let's go ahead and hit re-pour. Okay, so what do we see here? Well, we see different levels of clearances to different objects in the PCB. You can see that we have, if I just measure, almost exactly one millimeter of clearance. So it's a little over one millimeter. Um, so you can see here, that's exactly what we set in the PCB design rules. Now, if we go over to, let's say right here with these traces, we can then again, 
just measure here, and we're a little above the 12 mils that we set, and that's exactly what we wanted. So that's exactly how we set this all up, and it's pretty simple here. One thing that we didn't set, you'll notice in the design rules, was we didn't set a fill-to-fill -fill or polygon-to-polygon -polygon distance for ground to other nets that are not part of the power nets net class. So here we have a seven mil clearance. We can also update this. So the way to update this is just go to design and rules. And then you'll notice here in this matrix, we would want to then set, let's say polygon to polygon at 12. And then just to be sure, polygon to fill and then fill to fill. We set those all to 12. Hit apply and okay. And then you're going to immediately notice that we get a DRC right here. So that error can just be fixed by hitting T, G, and then A. A will report everything. And then you can see right here that clearance just increased. So that's the quick and easy way to set all of these different clearances to different objects in the PCB layout. We did this for ground, of course, but we could do this for multiple nets. So for example, if we have, let's say, two different groups of AC nets running at different voltages for whatever reason, we could also set different clearances between those nets. Now that's important because these rules in the IPC 2221 standard, this is based on the voltage difference between the conductors. So as an example, these values would normally be taken, let's say between, for this row, an AC input to ground. But you could also have an AC input to some other conductor at a DC voltage that is non-zero. So in that case, let's say you had AC input and its peak voltage is 162, then maybe if you have another uh, DC uh, conductor running at, let's say, 24 volts, now the voltage difference between them is not 162 volts, it's actually 138 volts. So remember, this is a voltage difference between the conductors. So if you had two rails operating at AC voltage with a slight offset between them, that voltage between them might be very small. And so in that case, you wouldn't need to use such large clearances in the PCB layout. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. Make sure to check out those links in the description so you can get access to the IPC 2221B calculator that we have in one of the blogs. And that calculator will give you the clearances that you need between different conductors based on an AC peak voltage or a DC voltage. Of course, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, leave your comments and questions in the comments section because we love getting your comments and questions. And last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks. Yeah. <laughs>